want someone to give you a job. Great job would work. He was a Bahamian Evangelical Christian and ordained minister. He founded the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. He was the CEO and chairman of the International Third World Leaders Association. He's Miles Monroe, and here's my take on his top 10 rules for success. Rule number five is my personal favorite. I make sure to stick around all the way to the end for some special bonus clips. And as always, as Miles is talking, if he says something that really, really resonates with you, please leave it in the comments below and put quotes around it so other people can be inspired as well. Enjoy. Change is also the principle of life. That means everything that is alive will change. And even things that are not alive will change. You know, a lady came to me, she says, I came to the Bahamas for the last 10 years and I missed four years. And I came here this past month and everything is different. The airport is new, she said. What happened to the old airport, she says. In other words, even the things not alive are changing. The way the river runs down the mountain is wearing away the mountain. You go back to that mountain 10 years later and the river is wider. Yes. Change is in creation. It's part of life. So here is the question then. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, to everything there is a season. And to every purpose... Under heaven, there is a time for it. For, to, to everything, there's a season. How many things have a season? Everything. This is one of the best news I ever got in my life. When I understood this, I was a teenager, and it changed my life. When I understood that everything is a season, let me tell you why. If you're having a bad time right now, it cannot last. If you cannot find a job right now, that is only a season. If your business is going in the wrong direction, it's a seasonal slide. If nobody wants to marry you, that's only a season. <laughs> There's going to come a season when everybody want to marry you. You got choices. <laughs> If you have no money right now, the good news is I am seasonally broke. Tell your neighbor, it's only for a time. That's the good news. And that's why we are always reminded, never make a permanent decision in a temporary problem. Success is, a, is, is not something you pursue. Success has a matter, it's a matter of, of becoming a person of value. Uh, we should not be pursuing money. We should pursue uh, purpose. We should pursue vision yeah. for ourselves and for our countries, for our communities. Uh, we should be not pursuing things. We need to pursue ideas. That's right. uh, I always say that there are three types of people in the world. There's poor people, there's rich people, and there's wealthy people. Yeah. Poor people talk about money all the time. Yeah. Rich people talk about things. Wealthy people, they talk about ideas. Mm. Uh, rich people, poor people, and wealthy people think differently. For example, poor people, they pursue money. Rich people pursue things. Wealthy people pursue ideas. Yes. And so that constantly there's a different way of thinking. I hope that the third world countries and the young people of our nations will become ideas people. Mm. You know, ideas control the world, it's not right. money. Right. And uh, ideas attract money. So I think if we, if we minimize this desire to get money and elevate the creativity of new ideas, we'll find that financial uh, results will naturally flow to it. Mm. Bill Gates didn't, didn't pursue money, he pursued an idea. Mm. Uh, Stephen Jobs, the late Stephen Jobs who invented the Apple computer and uh, the iPhone, he never went after money, he developed an idea. And I think, if you think of all the wealthy people in the world, it was ideas that made them wealthy, not money. That's right. So I think we need to, re to switch it, re reverse it. Mm. Don't pursue money and then try to get an idea. Mm. Get an idea and money will pursue the idea mm. and you become a, a byproduct mm. uh, as far as wealth. I tell our young people, I say to you right now, stop looking for employment. 
Why don't you position yourself differently and look for deployment? To employ us, to be employed means that somebody else is benefiting from your energy. To deploy me, to, to, to deploy yourself means that you are using your own energy to be productive. So instead of waiting for someone to give you a job, create your own work. That's why I tell people there's different between your work and your job. Your job is what they train you to do. Your work is what you were born to do. Your job is your skill, which they can fire you from that in time. But your work is your gift. No one can take that from you. Your job is where you get compensation for activity. Your work is where you get fulfillment because you love it so much. Your job you can retire from. Your work you can never retire from your work because your work is you. So when a person discovers their work, they, they no longer need a job because their, their work makes them productive. So there are young people in this country who are full of talents, full of gifts. And I want to say this too. Every problem in life is a business. All businesses are simply someone solving a problem. So the more problems that are in Kenya, the more businesses available for young people to begin. And this is what I think we are lacking. We are trained to get a job. We're not trained to start a business. We are trained to let other people employ us, not trained to deploy ourselves. Do we sit down and let change just happen to us? Or are we just watching change happening around us? Or are we aware that change is happening within us? Or are we going to be those proactive people who make sure that we affect what happens to us? Change also produces four types of people. They are in this room. First of all, uh, there are people who, who watch things happen. Now, let me say something about change. This is important here. Not all change is improvement. You used to weigh 128. And now you changed. And for some of you, that's not an improvement. You lost your wardrobe. <laughs> you lost your ability to climb up steps fast. You even lost the quality of health that you had. Change doesn't mean improvement all the time. But the problem is, without change, there can be no improvement. So you have to decide what to do with change. Change will happen. And if you are not careful, it could be destructive. So you have to determine what kind of change do I want in my life? And I want you as a young person, as a mother and a father, as a business person, to think about your company even, or your family, or your educational pursuit. Uh, what kind of classes do you want to take in college this year? What kind of grades do you want? What kind of relationships do you want to have in your life? Who do you want to drop and who do you want to pick up in your relationships? What kind of people do you want to associate with? Where do you want to travel that you've never been? What are the books you need to read you never read before? The changes come with choices. So what kind of person are you? We should not try to get everything now. You know, I went to college, I spent eight years in universities. Uh, I have three bachelor's degrees, a master's degree, five doctorate degrees, bestowed upon me upon, uh, by many different uh, universities. And uh, many of my friends that went to school with me in high school, they went straight to jobs. I went to college. You know, they started making money early. I delayed my money making for five years. And now, what they make in a year, I probably make in an hour. So, you know, we need to be uh, more focused on developing ourselves rather than trying to grab money now. Uh, focus on self-improvement, self-expansion, rather than trying to get your pocket to expand. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, the more valuable you make yourself, the more value you attract. Mm -hmm. uh, you are not pay for how hard you work, you are paid for what you are worth to the organization. That's right. And uh, the more intellectual development you have, the more spiritual development you have, the more psychological development you have, emotional stability, you become more valuable to the world. Mm -hmm. And let me say this finally. 
if you become valuable to the world, the world will pay you to be yourself. That's right. Mm. So it's important for you to become a person of value, not to seek value in things. That's right. uh, I get paid for what I know, not for what I do. And I think this is what we need to perceive as being most valuable. Uh, do you know they actually call in intellect, they call it capital. You know, intellectual capital, capital. is really a commodity. And so uh, I want to encourage our young people to uh, focus on, on discovering the purpose for your life, why God created you. And then discover your gifts, and then refine them, develop them, practice them, and then even begin to serve them freely to your community. Uh, develop yourself, and, and in a short time, you'll discover that uh, people will pursue you because when you develop your fruit and you maximize your fruit of your gift in, in life, just like a tree, trees never bring their fruit to you. That's right. They just simply manifest them. You attract, you are attracted to the tree. Mm -hmm. So when you develop your gifts and refine your gifts, you don't need to look for followers. They'll find you. That's right. After all, leadership is not about finding followers. It's about followers being attracted to what you have. Mm -hmm. And this is true commodity. The power for me to be successful was not in the teachers, it was not in the educational system, it was not in my culture, it was not in my society, it was within me. And I began to think, God, if you are a good God, why am I poor? Mm. If you are a great God, why are these people better than me? If you make me in your image, why are they special and I'm a monkey? And that night, no thunder, no lightning, no earthquakes, nothing. I just heard a voice in my mind, and the voice said, I ask you to believe me, and you will be saved, not them. And that night, I made a commitment to believe what God said. 13 years ago, I said, okay, I believe that I have the power to experience far beyond all I can ever ask, think, or imagine. 13 years old, and that's when my pursuit of God began. When was it that you realized you wanted to become a preacher? You know, I didn't want to become a preacher. Matter of fact, today I still don't consider myself a preacher. I think uh, it drove me to have a passion to help everybody who's been oppressed. My passion is to make sure that no one can, should live under what I experienced. I never desired to be a, a, a minister. I desire to help people. You should never judge your success by other people's accolades. You, you judge your success by God's instruction to your life and how well along you are with that instruction. Because I found out something in life, the average human being is so mediocre that to be an, a genius, just do a little extra. You all missed that. People are so normal. To be an expert, just go one inch abnormal, and they think you're great. So don't judge your success by the masses, what they think of you. Judge yourself by what God told you to do. Can I put it another way? When experience is your best teacher, then progress is imprisoned. Experience could be a curse. I've been taught by my parents years ago that experience is the best teacher. I don't believe that anymore. Experience could cause you to stop progressing because you keep judging your dreams by your experience or your vision by your experience and you end up saying, uh, I tried that before or I never saw anyone do it that way. And you begin to use your experience to stop your progress. This is why God always makes history with young people. Because old people got too much experience.